older couples advice to young couples in um, group discussion <coughs> which we facilitated had very interesting piece of information. They were told, the younger couples were told that if you truly are in a Christian marriage as a woman, you will not be worried what your man is doing because you know he is supervised by God. What he does, he doesn't do it because he fears you. He does it because he fears God. And whereas you, you cannot, you cannot nyapara him, you cannot supervise him everywhere. If he truly is a servant of the Lord, God will be with him everywhere, ensuring he keeps in the straight and the narrow. They were also told that if you really have a Christian husband, you are going to be a woman who serves the Lord just like your husband does. So he will not be telling you to keep quiet that uh, the role of a woman is in the kitchen. He will see your gifts and erase them. So women are allowed to speak if they have something to say and to speak it appropriately and encouraged by their Christian men. They were also told that if you really have a Christian husband, you, when he does wrong, because all human beings fail, he is going to apologize which of course traditionally was unheard of for the man of the house to be the one apologizing. But if he truly is a Christian, when he does wrong, he is going to apologize and say sorry because anybody can do wrong and your role will be forgive him. They were also told in a Christian marriage there will be no possibility of divorce. Therefore, there will be no talking of the, oh, you know me, I, from the way I see you, I can't stay with you forever, whatever. that will be out. You will be talking about how to sort out your problems, not how to abandon your problems or how abandon about your marriage. So you cannot have this constant discussion about divorce by two people who want the Lord to be the master of their, of their lives and of their marriage also. I thought that was a very interesting discussion. They were also told that um, their men do not know and need to know that women are different from men. And, um, and that will be important that um, you discuss it to show a man and a woman who are created different, they behave differently. For example, a man has never experienced a monthly period, doesn't understand these change of moods and inconveniences it's, 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 you have to explain to him because he does not know and he needs to appreciate you can't be a man just like he cannot be a woman and obviously the, the, the man needs to know that um, a woman with a baby will have a divided attention maybe for him once he comes from work he's just thinking of romance you, you, you also may have been at work you come home you are thinking of your baby and it is important to understand because of this gender difference, there will be the, the man must be made to understand the difference. There will be divided attention between the husband and the and the baby. Um, remember, this woman and the man must know that she's a wife, yes. She's an employee, yes. She's the same wife. Of course, she may also be an employer. She may be has, have a house, a house girl or some. She's, she's an entrepreneur. She's having staff. So she plays the role of an of employer. She is a mother, like you have seen. And they all have to happen at the same time. So anybody who wants a good marriage must appreciate this challenge that women and men have to face. You know, it's important to understand the activities belong to them to the women but really <laughs> when the Bible talked about women they were supposed to be helpers so it is the man who should take responsibility for running the home and see he doesn't, he doesn't abandon everything that is uh, abdication of responsibility when he plays no role in the running of the home 
So it is the responsibility of the man to identify the lady's potential in anything the family is doing and involve her fully. You, those, you must allow your wife to participate in all family decisions. Because if she is a help, how will she help you if you are making decisions even before consulting her? And that will be, that's what will help your marriage to, to do well. You know, both men and women, the, the young couples who are advised, have, um, they have to see marriage as something positive, not a burden. They have to see marriage as something God created for the good of both the wife and the husband, not for the good of the husband and as a burden to the wife. You know, God had a plan. For example, he wanted to fill the earth, and he did not give man the capacity to get children without a wife. So, for God's plan to be fulfilled, it was necessary for there to be a woman. And it is in marriage that that plan of God is fulfilled. And that's why you are, when you come together, you have the joy of getting children who are not illicit or illegitimate. And you know, when you come to this, you have one person for life who is going to be with you, um, God allowing it, for long. Your parents cannot be with you for long because they bring you up, but you finally grow up and you have to leave them. But this one, you start together maybe at the age of 25, and if you are going to go to the age of 90s, both of you, you have had uh, 70 years of marriage together. So you, you are happy to have somebody who cares about you, somebody who wonders where you are. As a woman, you feel protected by the presence of a man who cares for you. That's a blessing that there is in, in marriage. So God wants you to, wanted you to feel that protection. So he gave you a chance to be involved in a marriage. So the, the families should know that it's a big blessing to, to enter into marriage. And you know, it also is an opportunity to be yourself before your spouse. You know, when you are single, you are being careful how people are seeing you because you are st it's like you're in the market. You don't want to dispel possible suitors. But you get married and you can be yourself with your husband because he accepts you the way you are. You can be like yourself as a, as a wife or as a husband. And I think that's a fantastic thing. To, it allows you to relax without having to do any drama. Um, it says, by the way, it's the same when you're in the office. All the other roles, you have to be careful. There's some diplomacy you have to play. And sometimes people don't want to know the real you. They want you to play games. Only to come home and you can be yourself and you have somebody who understands you and accepts you the way you are. And I think that um, that, that is a very, very important thing to understand. And so the, so the, the young couples who are supposed to understand that marriage is a blessing, is a gift God gives. Um... And you see, if you became a mother before you have a husband, it becomes a scandal. If you get a child after the wedding, it's excitement. Everybody is involved. They are visiting and they are excited. You can see how marriage changes things. It's a blessing to be, to be in a marriage. It has their, there are, of course, challenges in marriage, but now we are looking at the blessings, or they were supposed to, they were advising them on the blessings. So, you, because of looking at the many blessings in marriage, you are then willing and, and with God's ability able to face the challenges that marriage brings because you can see the benefit of standing in this marriage and uh, playing your role for the overall good of all of you. So, Shouldn't men wish women knew? These were the older men trying to tell the younger, the younger, younger men some piece of advice. 
And he was being told, one thing you must let your wife know is that when she submits to you, it makes you feel like a man. It makes you feel, feel like the man of the house. Of course, the word of thought submitting doesn't mean becoming a doormat. But you feel a man has an ego that can be destroyed when he feels that even the wife does not recognize who she, who she is. They, they also are told that um, they also want to be loved. Women want to be loved. But sometimes they, the women miss the fact that men feel very happy when they realize the wife loves them. And um, they do not become like a shopkeeper where they are only loved if they bring something home. They want to be loved just because they are the men of the home. You, they, they should, um, the, the, the wife should learn that you are not thrown out of your home. You made a choice. They should recognize that you had a home, the man had a home which he deliberately left in order to create a home with you. And if that, they do that, they should appreciate that the man was willing to surrender his home in order to create this new home with you. So, the men, younger, the younger men were told that uh, they must see their marriages as a gift from God. You need it's only in marriage they will have the possibility of being called daddy correctly and be happy about it. It's in marriage where they will see a woman who has committed themselves to be your helper. Sometimes you are going through some very stressing situation in the office and there's nobody to share with. Because the people you would be wanting to share with are the same ones that are bringing the stress. They are the stressors. It is good to have a home where you can come home and uh, you know you have somebody who understands you, can tell they are willing to listen to your stories, willing to fire your frustration too. Even as you participate in the home, maybe doing several duties as a man of the home. Of course there are challenges of the fact that you as a as a, as a man of the home is supposed to be the one providing, the same one protecting. Yes, but when you see the benefits of, of marriage, you'll be willing to take the challenge of the, and take the responsibility of, of doing what a man should do in his family. You know, marriage is the only place you can you can deal with your sexual desires honorably, joyfully, without looking behind your back. Try not, try to do it elsewhere and it will bring scandal. It may even bring you HIV. And so we, God gave us marriage so that we can feel complete, feel like this is where we should be long term. You know, you are in your parents for maybe 20 years. You are likely to be with your wife if the Lord gives you a long life for 70 years or 60 years. You should therefore feel complete if you are in a marriage. To have somebody who understands you and cares about you. Because why does she understand you? Because you have opened up your health. You feel free enough, vulnerable, yes, but free enough to open up yourself. Even your parents, you are not able to open up like that. There are things you don't think are subjects that should be discussing with your mother. But there is no subject under the earth which is bad when it comes to your spouse. You can discuss anything and everything, and that allows you to remove a burden from you. It also gives you opportunity to have a kind of a pilot project on leadership. As you lead your small home, you make mistakes, you are corrected, you are forgiven. You are learning how to be a leader out there in the open. And so when you lead your family, it gives you a name, gives you a respect, gives you 
a reason for whatever it is you are doing um, because you think as you work very hard you have some people who appreciate you and who are going to um, and then we are going to gain you know especially we are talking about all these joys of marriage in a Christian marriage where there is some some kind of democracy it's where everybody participates where you complement each other where there is no fear of cutting cut you know not lasting so you are willing to open up yourself because you intend to be here for life and you see the wife not as a slave but as a partner you may be the chairman but it's you are one among equals so if you're not talking about traditional marriage, we're talking about a Christian marriage. And the, so the young people, the young couples who are taught to see the many benefits that, uh, that should be there. So the young men were told, your wife did not, is not a slave, you did not buy her. And that's why in Christianity we do not encourage Purchase. We don't encourage bride price. You can give gifts, but you don't encourage bride price. You don't buy the person. Therefore, anything she does must not be taken for granted. You should appreciate her in every way. Appreciate her meals. Don't just say, but um, that's your responsibility. No. She did not have to come. She opted to come. You should be grateful that she has made a meal. And that they were told a lot of men uh, do not behave Christian in this aspect. They don't, they take their, the efforts of their wives for granted. And uh, they were also discouraged from using generalization about women. Oh, women are, women are this, women the other. So, uh, women are not the same. So you need to look at your wife as a unique person. Know her, understand her. Don't say women. And then what you hear the men are doing to their to their women is what you also do. Yours is unique. Not just a woman. It's your wife, your companion. That's why you become transparent before her. Even if the other men are not transparent. You as a Christian man, you'll be transparent. Open to her. As a man, you shouldn't be having secrets. You are hiding away from your, from your wife if you really want a good Christian marriage. You should also open up to talk about any problem rather than uh, give the silence treatment where you have a problem but you don't say it and even when you say it you say it to your friends you don't tell the person whom you think is causing the problem so you can't sort out a problem before you discuss it but you also need to accept what you are told in discussing a problem accept adjust to the new changes that the one problem does not get you don't debate one problem all the time even after you sorted it out. It's also important to, as a man, to know you are the provider. But do not expect your wife to explain every shilling she uses. There must be contingency money he, she can use without having to explain. You also need money. Little money, of course. But uh, So your wife needs not to be suffocated into cr into into confusion let her have some freedom with some money she can use for her personal use and that will allow your wife to do things there are major issues we must all budget together but you need some some level some breathing space a teen also may need a time to be with her friends not too much time but time to be with her friends other women you also need to know that um, her view of beauty is not like yours. That when she beautifies herself, it's not lost cash. It is that she's trying to be the woman you can be proud about. So you should be willing refunding the, those kind of things because that's a woman. Of course, you you just have a shower and you are okay with, but uh, that you are not a woman. So the young men were told think about it. Even the Bible talks about the beauty of women. And it costs money. But in order not to overspend, it will be important that your wife knows 
how much you earn. You also know how much he earns and that you budget together. So that he now knows that if this year is made for it's made for a thousand shillings, we may be left with nothing to eat. I'll go for where it is only five hundred shillings. It will be important that um, that is understood uh, clearly. And um, you need to accept when you are wrong. The young men were told you, um, by not taking your eye for granted. And I think that will be important. And also, do not accept, do not require unquestioned obedience by a wife. Even if she's a missive to you, she needs, her voice needs to be heard. And obedience should only come after due consideration and discussion. So you must give and you must be available to your wife, both quantity and quality. Some people only give quality. Ah, I'm not available, but when we are together, I'm, I'm like this, you know. Your wife needs both quantity of time and quality of time. It will be important that that is, that is, that is something you are aware of. And you spend time on. The older, the, the younger women were also told by the older women that there is a necessity of appreciating men. Don't take your man for granted. Whatever he does for you, of course he does it because he loves you, but please appreciate them. If appreciation encourages the person to keep doing what they have done. So acknowledge that the man, the man is available. When he comes home, don't complain all the time you are come late. What about there are men who don't come home at all? So appreciate that they have come. Then at an appropriate time, say, is it possible you can come earlier? And one of the things men hate is to be compared. Oh, 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 that is terrible. You are not like Baba so and so. You know, your younger brother is even better. I was told by his wife he does this and this to her. That's a no-go zone, my sister. They were told. Do not compare your man with any other man. It's wrong. If you have something to suggest, suggest it. Without necessarily comparing. And that's... And, and also men, they were told men want to deal with you, not with the house girl. So do not delegate a wife's duty to a house help. Otherwise, you might lose the man and you say he's backsliding, but you are, the devil used you to force him to backsliding. So you need to tell your house girl there are certain things she cannot do for your, for your, for your husband, the, the, the younger women were told. The other thing the, 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 the women were told, do not start having a kind of a relationship with your relatives that your husband is not aware of. So you are building a house for your mother and your husband is not even aware. Obviously, he or you cheated and that could bring down your marriage. So do not assist your relatives without your husband knowing and participating. After all, where would you have gotten the money from if you agreed that all the money belongs to both of you? So anything you do, you must avoid suspicion. Do not create a... a a room for mistrust where the, 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 your husband will no longer trust you because you lied. That's why right from before marriage, come open the things that would make him unhappy. Tell him in advance. Let him rise up, get disappointed, but realize you are walking in the open. That way he knows that it's nothing you're hiding because you have told him even things you never have discovered. And the younger women were told men are, seem to be more interested in sex than women are. So therefore you have to make yourself available even when you, have, you don't have as much interest. Because you understand you are dealing with a man and you are there available for him. So they were told to understand that difference that seems to be natural. And uh, generally speaking, women are said to be bad timekeepers, and uh, that can get into the uh, into the man 
So it's important to explain that I will not come quickly because I'm doing things like this. Why don't you give me another one hour? Don't promise to be available at 8. Then at 9 o'clock you are still not, not there, not available, not on, not on time. And there are many things. All these things were pieces of advice that the, the young couples were to, to learn. So what, what, was, what did the seminar finally come up with? That marriage is for life, and if you want it to be to run well, you have to invest both the wife and the husband. They have to invest. And because marriage is for life, it means you can forgive and overlook small bits of time when there is strain, because you are looking long term. And over long term, you have had a good marriage. But what about uh, if a husband dies? If a husband dies, scripturally, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39, the lady is free to marry anyone. She doesn't have to continue being in the husband's clan. She can marry anyone, but he must be in Christ's clan. Husband must not require the wife to, after once he is dead, he should not try to manage the wife who is still alive. You know, she doesn't have to remarry, of course. He's saying in case she chooses to remarry. If she cannot remarry, what happens to her sexual needs? Obviously, the same way that happens to, to, to single people. Sex is not like oxygen. So do not feel like you must remarry and you end up in a total mess because of the kind of people you have married in a hurry. Because sex is not like oxygen means you can do without it. It's good if it is there, but you don't you won't still survive even without it. So if you with the, 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 the seminar therefore emphasize that because you want to, to together for life not just a part of the time, but for, for life, then you need clear methods. Three things. Number one, be clear what you want to achieve as a couple. Number two, learn what makes the other person unhappy so that you avoid it. Number three, agree. When there is no quarrel, agree on a way of Resolving conflict. And as you seek to resolve conflict, what will happen is that you will be able not to get the conflict to ex escalate. Because after all, once the conflict comes, you agree. One of the most important things in conflict solution is find out what type of conflict is it. Is this a content con conflict? Then don't quarrel. Just look for the information. Once the information is available, the quarrel is over. If you are quarreling about where the money is, just, 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 uh, just sh show where it is. Don't start accusing someone on a, on a matter that can very, very easily be verified. So agree what type of conflict. But number two, agree that whatever you are having conflict about should not be something that comes between the two of you. You must, the two of you come on one side and then look at the conflict, both of you. So don't say you against me. <laughs> it should be, this is a conflict. Which is the best way of sorting it out? Your mother needs money. The two of us, how can we deal with that matter? Rather than, what's wrong with your mother? It needs, you need to find a way of coming on one side and putting the issue that brings the conflict on the other side and then tackling it together. But most important is to understand that even after the end of the conflict, you are still going to be together. And therefore, you do not want to say something you are going to regret. You, you help. So those are some of the things that um, older couples would like to share with younger couples whether it's a young husband or a young wife, from their experience. And I thought I should share them with you. 
and uh, hope that you also will take time to share your experiences that help your marriage with the younger couples.